Alexi Lafreniere was the consensus first overall pick in the 2020 NHL entry draft, and for good reason. The young winger was coming off 112 points in 52 games as the captain of the Ramouski Oceanic in the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League, and he was a key contributor for Canada's gold medal winning squad at the 2019-2020 World Junior Championships. Unfortunately, Lafreniere hasn't quite blossomed into the star that people thought he was destined to be in the NHL. Let's clear this up right away. I'm the last person who would pile on a kid that just turned 22 and has the pressure of the world on him playing in the Big Apple, but at the same time, it's definitely fair to say that he has not grown nor developed as everybody would have expected and honestly hoped for. In my opinion, Lafreniere has looked solid so far in the 2023-2024 season, even if the numbers are only mediocre through nine games. Let's dive deeper into this and determine what's next for Alexi Lafreniere and what's next for the New York Rangers. But first, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. It lets me know that you enjoy this new style of content we're working on. Despite the negative negative talk tracks around Lafreniere, he has still played the most NHL games out of anybody in his draft class at 225 to date. Tim Stutzla, Dawson Mercer, Lucas Raymond, and Seth Jarvis are the only others from the draft class who have even played over 150 games so far. But I want this story to start a little bit earlier in his career, so let's go back to his junior days in Quebec. Alexi Lafreniere was the first overall pick in the 2017 QMJHL entry draft selected by the Ramouski Oceanic who you likely know as the team Sidney Crosby played for. In his rookie season in the queue, Lafreniere recorded 80 points, tallying 42 goals and 38 assists, landing him on the QMJHL first all-star team and receiving the Rookie of the Year award. Those 42 goals were the highest recorded by a rookie in the queue since, you guessed it, Sidney Crosby, who notched 54 in his rookie campaign. In case he wasn't already being compared to Sid enough for playing on the same team, now the expectations were really high for Lafreniere. His second season in the queue was more of the same. He was named an alternate captain for the Oceanic, scored a similar number of goals with 37, and significantly upped his his assist to 68, totaling 105 points in 61 games. The cherry on top was taking home league MVP honors, something quite rare for a kid his age. He also played for Team Canada at the 2018-2019 World Juniors, albeit in a limited role due to his age, scoring one goal in five games as Canada failed to capture a medal on home ice. The next year, Lafreniere was named the captain of the Oceanic in his draft year, and frankly, he was dominant start to finish. He won his second straight league MVP award. He put up 112 points in 51 games, tallying 35 goals and 77 assists. That was good enough for a 2.15 points per game pace, which was the best in the entire CHL since Connor McDavid's last season in the OHL. Laffey also carried that two point per game pace into the World Juniors, racking up four goals and six assists for 10 points in five games and taking home tournament and MVP for good measure. Lastly, to cap off the super impressive draft season, Lafreniere was named the CHL's top player for the second year in a row. The only other player to ever receive this award multiple times, you guessed it again, Sid the Kid. The expectations were now at an all-time high for the Frenchman. Corey Pronman of The Athletic, who's one of my favorite guys to look to for input on prospects, said Lafreniere is one of the most purely skilled players I've ever seen as a first-year draft-eligible prospect. He also said that Lafreniere is known as more of a playmaker than a goal scorer and that he himself admits to that. But he also thinks that his goal-scoring ability is a very underrated aspect of his game. It's not the best part of his game, but it would be the best part for many other prospects if they had a shot like his. October 6, 2023, draft night. The Rangers select Alexi Lafreniere first overall as everybody expects, and then six days later on October 12th, he inks his entry-level contract with the Blue Shirts. The 2020-2021 NHL season didn't begin until January, but January 14th, 2021, he finally made his NHL debut. It was a relatively slow start to his rookie campaign, but he played in all 56 games and really got more comfortable as the year went along. He even ended the last nine games of the season with four goals and three assists over that period. He split time between two lines for the most part, playing with either Mika Zabinijad and Pavel Buchnevich, or with fellow youngsters Philip Hedl and Capo Caco. Laffey's final stat line for the season, 12 goals, 9 apples, 21 points in 56 games played, 
good for a .375 points per game pace. He racked up 67 total shots and averaged 13 minutes and 53 seconds of ice time per game. The Blue Shirts began the 2021-2022 NHL season with a new bench boss as David Quinn was out and Gerard Gallant was in. The Rangers had a much better season as a whole, jumping up from 5th in the division to 2nd in the division and even made it to the conference finals. However, Lafreniere didn't see too much offensive growth from his rookie season. He finished with a season stat line of 19 goals, 12 assists, 31 points in 79 games, a slight uptick to .393 points per game, but he saw the same ice time as the year prior, averaging 13 minutes and 59 seconds a night. He got a fair share of ice time with Zabinijad and Chris Kreider, but also spent time lower in the lineup with the likes of Hedl, Barkley Goodrow, and Julian Gauthier. Where I was personally most impressed with his game in the sophomore season, which I'll likely attribute to Gerard Gallant, was that Lafreniere started to use his 6 foot 1 195 pound frame a bit more. He more than doubled his hit total from the year prior with 108. He more than doubled his takeaways from the year prior with 44, and he more than doubled his block shots from the year prior with 26. As a player, he's never been the fleetest of foot, but he used his size and his high IQ to be a bit more of a presence in the D zone also fired 110 shots on net compared to the 67 in his shortened rookie season. Overall, it was a good look. Jumping ahead to the playoffs, I mentioned the Rangers went on a deep run, and this is actually where Laffey played some of his best hockey. He tallied two goals and seven assists for nine points in 20 games, and particularly I remember him being a force in their series against the Pittsburgh Penguins. The 2022-2023 season is where we really saw the kid line come together as a trio, with Hedl, Kako, and Lafreniere. 50% of Laffey's 5-on-5 ice time was spent with this group. They boasted a 34 goals, 4 to 21 goals against ratio as a 5-on-5 line, which is quite strong to go along with a 53.2% Corsi. As a line, they were very impressive on a lot of nights. As an individual, he looked better, but the counting stats still weren't where you'd like them to be. Laffey ended up with 16 goals and 23 assists for a career-high 39 points in 81 games. He took 135 shots on net and laid 141 hits, both of which were career highs as well, and began to see more trust from his coaches, averaging 15 minutes and 13 seconds of ice time per night. All in all, it was a nice step forward for Lafreniere, but a small step, not the breakout leap that everybody in New York has been dying for. The Rangers, as a team, they had another good year, finished third in the division, ended up with 107 points compared to 110 the year prior, but ultimately fell apart in the playoffs, lost in the first round. That brings us up to date the 2023-2024 season, where the Rangers badly need their youngsters, Kako and Lafreniere especially, to take a leap forward. I spoke with Rangers aficionado Johnny Lazarus, who covers the team for the Hockey News and hosts the popular Blue Crew pod, to try to gauge his expectations and inputs on Laffey this season, and honestly, we were pretty well on the same page. Lazarus said he's looking for 60 points out of either Kako or Lafreniere, and I, focusing specifically on Laffey, feel that anything below 50 points Points would be extremely worrisome for his development. Laffey currently sits at four goals and zero assists through nine games. He's playing predominantly on a line with Philip Hedl and superstar Artemi Panarin, a line that frankly is going to be relied upon for a lot of offense on this Rangers team. His current stat line would put him on pace for 36 goals and zero assists, which obviously won't happen. But what's funny about that is Johnny Lazarus and I both agreed that Laffey could and should actually be shooting the puck more than he has been. You wouldn't guess that by the four goals and zero assists, but he looks very engaged this season. He seems more confident when possessing the puck, but frankly, he's overhandling it while waiting for Panarin to get open, forcing passes Panarin's way. If Laffey starts to trust his above average shot a little bit more, he should be able to create more offense for a Rangers team that has been stifled at five on five so far this year. I would personally be stunned if Laffey didn't hit the 20 goal mark this year for the first time and truly think 25 to 30 tucks is within reason for him. But the main question here and the title of this video is what's next for Lafreniere and for the New York Rangers. I think it's too early in the season to reflect on the impact that new head coach Peter Laviolette may have had on him, but I do like that fit for his growth long term. The main thing I want to see from Laffey this year, aside from more shots, is just confidence. 
The big winger that I watched so closely in the 1920 World Juniors, he was attacking defensemen. He was making creative plays. He was finding open spaces that others couldn't, and he was driving the net aggressively. He was a player filled with confidence because he knew he was one of, if not the best player on the ice at all times. It sounds crazy given his NHL results so far, but he is truthfully one of the most skilled players in Rangers games as well. He just needs to play like he knows that. I touched on it earlier in the video, but this kid just turned 22 last month. When I was 22, I was calling my mom asking her how long to cook frozen pizzas for. Meanwhile, Laffy is standing at center ice in Madison Square Garden in front of 18,000 fans while he tries to crack a power play unit that features Panarin, Kreider, Zabinijad, and Adam Fox. Not everyone steps into the league at 18 and puts up Connor McDavid or Austin Matthews or even Jack Hughes numbers. These things take time. I mean, just look at his own draft class. The second overall pick, Quinton Byfield, is just starting to get a regular shift in Los Angeles now. Alex Holtz went 7th overall to New Jersey. He's only played 36 games. Jack Quinn, Marco Rossi, Cole Perfetti, Lucas Reichel, Jake Neighbors, Ridley Gregg, all guys who went high in the first round of this draft are expected to be key players in their team's futures, but none of them have even played a full 82 games in the NHL yet. I am confident confident that Alexi Lafreniere will have a long, successful NHL career playing top six minutes on good hockey teams. However, the second part of the question is what's next for the New York Rangers. This is a big year for the Blue Shirts. I'm not going to come on here and say, oh my god, the Rangers have to move Lafreniere. If he doesn't hit 50 points this year, this simply can't go on. But let's be real, I mean, first overall picks come with a lot of expectation and even more pressure. If if both the Rangers and Lafreniere do not meet their expectations this year, I think they will seriously consider a change. Laffy's got one more year on his deal with the Rangers after this, at a very manageable $2.325 million, and he'll be a restricted free agent at the conclusion of that. They've tried different line combinations, they've tried them on different special teams at times, and they've gone to bat for him. Throw the first overall pick narrative aside, if he doesn't produce like a top six winger this year and begin to contribute consistently on a power play unit, the Rangers who are pushing for a Stanley Cup will be forced to look for a suitable replacement in their top six forward core. At the end of the day, I'm rooting for Alexi Lafreniere. He has a lot of the tools needed to be an elite forward in the NHL, and this year, so far at least, he's getting the opportunity to prove himself. He needs to take a leap forward this year in offensive production, and he needs to play with that confidence night in and night out. At his best, Laffy should be a big winger that is difficult to play against at both ends of the ice, someone who can score from just about anywhere in the Ozone, and someone who can make highly skilled plays with elite line mates like Artemi Panarin or Mika Zabinijad. If he can't become that in New York, perhaps we see Laffy in a different uniform in a year or two. I believe in Alexi Lafreniere, and I'm sure several NHL GMs do too.